Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. So today we are gonna talk about how to cut your firewood all the same length. Stick around. Before we get started with today's video, I wanted to talk about a few questions we get asked pretty often. One, this marathon jacket. Everybody asks me if I work for marathon. I don't. It was actually my first job in high school. I worked at a marathon gas station and car wash. Do me a favor, down in the comments below, let me know what your first job was. Secondly, let's talk about why it's important to cut your firewood all the same length. It's gonna help you with three different things. It's gonna help you with stacking your firewood, it's gonna help you burning your firewood, and if you're like me and you sell firewood, it's gonna help you sell your firewood. Let me explain. So if you've been cutting and burning firewood for quite a while, you know that in order to have a good fire inside the house or inside your wood boiler, that wood needs to be seasoned. And in order to do that, you need to stack it outside for at least 12 months. And if you cut your firewood all the same length, you have a much better chance of having that firewood stack stay standing all 12 months until it's fully seasoned. When you get longer pieces and shorter pieces, it's easier for your pile to get uneven and it's gonna cause that pile to fall over and you're gonna end up having to restack it three or four times throughout the year. Now burning your firewood, if you've got a wood stove, you know that you have a very limited space inside your wood stove. Me, I can burn up to 18 inch logs, but I like to cut my firewood to 16 inches because that way I've got a little bit of wiggle room inside the stove and you don't wanna go really any more than that, and you don't wanna go any shorter than that. If you go shorter than 16 inches, then you're not gonna be getting as long of a burn time out of your wood as you can. So you're gonna be refilling your wood stove more often. Now the third thing that we mentioned is selling your firewood. When you're selling firewood, presentation is everything. Look at this firewood bundle here. This is seasoned oak here, and every piece here is exactly the same length. When you're selling firewood, presentation is paramount, and it's what's going to get somebody to purchase your product over somebody else's. In addition to that, if you're selling to somebody who burns in a wood stove, they're gonna have the same issue that you would have burning in your own wood stove. They need a very specific length to fit in their wood stove. So if you can meet those standards, you're gonna be able to sell wood to more people. So now let's talk about a few products that you can purchase right now directly from a manufacturer. So first thing that you've probably already seen is the Mingo marker. It has a little wheel on it that measures exactly 16 inches. And every 16 inches, you have a spray paint, a spray paint can that every 16 inches, it's gonna put a little dot of spray paint. Now, I think that that's probably the most, the easiest to use product. However, it does have some drawbacks. You always have to worry about running out of spray paint, switching out the cans, and then on a day like today, when it's below freezing out, you can't use it because your spray paint is frozen. So really, that's only a three month, or three uh, season solution. You can't really use it much in the winter time. The next is there's an AccuMark firewood measuring stick that magnets onto the side of your bar. Um, I think that's a pretty good product, and that's what we're actually gonna try to replicate today. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I've got the chainsaw sitting in the vise here. I just finished putting a fresh edge on the chain, and what the AccuMark does is it's actually a rod that would mount via magnet onto the side of your bar, and it lets you know exactly 16 inches from your chain to the outside of the bar, and that's gonna allow you to cut your firewood all the same length. Now, the AccuMark, I believe, is somewhere in the neighborhood of $25 to $35, um, but I'm gonna show you how you can make one at home, a DIY project for a little over $6 and accomplish the same thing. Before we get into the one we're gonna make today, I wanted to show you one that one of the subscribers to this channel actually made and gave me. Uh, this is a piece of all thread here, and then you've got a barrel nut, a regular nut, and then a washer and two other nuts here. And this right here is marked at 16 inches. And what this one is designed to do, instead of magneting to your bar, you can actually replace your bar nut with this and just have it right on the side of the, uh, the chainsaw chain here. So if you wanted to replicate this design, I think it'd be pretty easy. You need one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. I'd imagine you could probably have this one for less than six bucks as well. Now the reason I'm gonna make a second one of these is because I didn't really care to have it on the bar nut here because your chain is right here and where you're measuring is back here. So it was kind of inconvenient to try to use your measuring stick back here when you're cutting up here. So that's why we're gonna to try to make one with a magnet today that'll go on the end of your bar. And that way your measuring stick is right where the chain is gonna be contacting the wood to make your mark. So the supplies we picked up to make our own DIY firewood measuring stick 
is this half inch by two foot flow guard gold CPVC. This was $1.36. And then we picked up some round base magnets. This was a two pack for $2.97. This is rated for a maximum 11 pounds of force. So that should be plenty for this half inch pipe here. The last thing on the list was we got some Loctite here. This was $1.96 for a two pack of Loctite. So that is a grand total of $6.31. Let's see if it works. Now because this piece of half inch pipe here is 24 inches long, we're gonna have to go ahead and cut it down to 16 inches because that is the size that I want for my wood stove and that's the size that I sell. All right, so let's read the directions before we put this together. So unscrew the cap, uh, apply sparingly to one surface, press both parts together and hold for at least five seconds. For best results, hold for 15 to 45 seconds. So this is supposed to be pretty fast drying stuff here. So there you go, that Loctite is now tight. That didn't take more than about 45 seconds to set and that is on there. It's not gonna come off. So you can see right there, this magnet sticks pretty good to the bar, comes off, and this is a solid connection here. Let's go take the saw out and we'll test this on that cherry tree we took down in the last video and see how well this holds up to vibrations and everything from actually running the chainsaw. All right, so we just made it back to the woods here and it is snowing. And I don't know about you guys, but this is like one of my favorite times of the year, especially for firewood. I'd rather be out here in the snow than in the 90 degree heat, the humidity, the mosquitoes, the ticks, the deer flies. I, I just think it's so much prettier out here and it's a lot easier to work because you're nice and cool. But anyway, this is the, that cherry tree we took down in the last video. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to save a saw log out of this. I'd like to, at some point in the future, get a sawmill. I can't make any promises on how soon, but that is something I would like to have at some point. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off right at that crotch there and drag it out and set it aside for later. And then what we're gonna go ahead and test these uh, firewood measuring tools on is gonna be the other portion of this cherry tree right here. So I'm gonna get this saw log drug out and then I'll go ahead and cut a portion of this top part here and drag that out. And then we'll start cutting and see how well it works and if it holds up or not. So there you go guys, that is your $6 hack to cut perfect firewood every time. If you look down the line here, 
these are all within, I'd say less than half an inch of each other, right about the same size. That's gonna make perfect bundle grade firewood, especially cherry. I'll be able to sell this as smoking wood and charge a premium for it. I'll tell you what guys, I am actually really impressed with this. I thought when I went to go buy all this stuff, it was gonna be kind of chintzy and junky. I didn't know how well the glue was gonna hold the magnet onto the end here. And I didn't know how well the magnet was gonna hold this onto the bar. I thought once I got the saw running, that the vibration from the chainsaw was gonna wiggle this off. Really the only time that it falls off is if you've got it on there when you're trying to pull start it, it might fall off. But other than that, it stays on there really good. So yeah, there is you know two separate DIY ideas if you wanna make yourself one of these chainsaw markers. I would say if I had to pick, all things being equal, these are both probably about six bucks in materials to make it yourself. I'd rather have the magnet one. Uh, like I said, this one being backed by the bar nut is just not where you're making your mark at. It's a little harder to work with. And also this one, you're gonna need a wrench to put this on and off of your bar nut. Whereas this one is a lot easier to put on and take off. So when you make that transition from marking to cutting, all you gotta do is just pop this right off and you're ready to go. This one, you've gotta get out a tool and take it off and put your bar nut back on. But anyway, I think that about wraps this one up. Don't forget, let me know in the comments down below where your first job was. Like I said, I worked at a car wash and a gas station. That was my first job in high school. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and check out some other videos. Thanks for watching.